Congratulations on receiving your first worm bin. You are about to embark on an adventure full of knowledge, fun, and a little bit of sliminess. This video is to help show you how to maintain your worm bins in your classrooms, as well as show you how easy it is to start your own worm bins at your own houses. At the end of the year, you will hopefully have a thriving, healthy environment filled with happy worms and rich soil. You can use this soil for a garden at your school or take it home, or maybe even divide up the worms to start your own worm bins at your houses. Thanks for following along, now let's get started. Because worms are living creatures, they need to breathe just like us. So we're going to drill some holes uh, in the bottom of this container. Next we're going to make the bedding. You will need peat moss, wood chips, and newspaper. Your bedding should be about as moist as a wrung out sponge. You don't want it to be too wet because worms need to breathe and they would drown if it was too wet, but it does need to be a little moist. Now it's time for the worms. Bet you thought we were going to open a can of worms. <laughs> nope, we got a bucket of worms, 2,000 of them, from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm all the way out in Pennsylvania. So we're going to take one scoop of these worms and put them in their new home. So once your worm bins are full and you got your worms all happy in their homes, we need to talk about what you need to feed them. Um, so there are a lot of different things you can feed them, all food objects, um, so like your fruits and your vegetables, any produce. The things that you really want to think about are the things you don't want to feed them. This would be things like dairy, meat, bones, because worms can't eat those. Uh, another thing to think about when you're feeding your worms is you want to give it to them in pieces. You don't want to give them these whole pieces of foods. You want to give them little tiny pieces because they have tiny mouths. So it'll be easier for them to eat tiny pieces of food instead. When you have your worm bins in your classroom, you can take the worms out and do some observations. So some things that you can look for would be the saddle, which kind of looks like a band-aid. And usually the saddle is going to be towards the anterior end of the worm, which would be the front. And the back end of the worm would be called its posterior. When you take a worm from its moist environment and put it onto your hand, which usually is a lot drier, you may notice that it will start to secrete a yellow fluid. This is not pee. That yellow fluid is actually called colemic fluid. This has two purposes. The first purpose is to moisten dry environments, and the second one is to deter predators. So birds, which usually eat worms, uh, don't like the taste of colemic fluid. It's really bitter. Um, so that yellow fluid is what they'll secrete to make sure the birds don't eat them, and also to make your dry hands a better, more moist environment for them to hang out on. Whee! Oh, snap. You see that little ball right there? That is a worm egg. See if you can find these in your own worm bins. They look like tiny lemons. If you want to do some fun experiments on your desk, put your worm down and put some food on the desk, maybe some water, different things to see what it gravitates more towards. Your worm bins will start out looking like this and eventually look more like this. You'll notice that you'll start to have more uh, brown stuff that looks like soil. What this really is, is something called castings. Castings are essentially worm poop. Eventually, you can take this nutrient-rich soil and put it in your gardens, um, and it'll help your plants grow. 